Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Movies We Can Learn From. And we're going to learn about a specific movie called After Yang uh, with our movie reviewer, George Kaysen, uh, in a moment. George Kaysen, movie reviewer and architecture student, a man of for all seasons, the Renaissance man. You could really appreciate this movie after Yang. What's what's the play on words there? Who's Yang? What happens after Yang? What are we talking about, George? We're talking about Brave New World. This movie is about when you have cyborgs or robots that are so human that have emotion, that have think, they can think, they can feel, and and uh, basically. This couple have bought this, this, this robot, this cyborg, for their adopted daughter so she can have a companion, I guess brother, an older brother, to teach her and whatever, because the, the mother has a career and the dad has a shop and they're busy. So they've bought, they bought a companion and a teacher, in-house teacher for their little daughter. And she's adorable little girl, right? And, and he is just brilliant, you know. Um, and he talks all about his his life, his feelings, but he doesn't talk about it, where his his former two owners. So he only talks about you know his own feelings and whatever. And as the show progresses, just like you like Jay, little bits and pieces come out, and eventually we see a little more about him. Uh, Yang, he is Yang, and after Yang me, means. After he malfunctions and 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 pretty much dies, you know, how these other people in the family are dealing with it, and how they deal with our own human emotions, and and we it, it really puts us into makes us look at ourselves. So it's a really excellent excellent movie, and it's as I said, sci-fi, you know, and where we're going and brave new world, you know, for someone my age coming from when. We had one ringy dingy phones, and now look where we're going. You know, I mean, I, I was thirty five or thirty six when they put a computer on my desk at my office in California. So we're really the technology is advancing so fast, and then it also talks about you know corporate things um, when this cyborg cannot be fixed. The the company tells him, well, we'll just give you a new one, but the little girl is already attached to Yang. And they don't want to. So, so the father goes and tries everything he can do to get Yang fixed, but it's really complicated. It's complicated. So we can get into the details later, but I'll let you fill in whatever you want to fill in, Jay, and then we'll take it from there. Well, you kind of get into the family in this, yeah. uh, this movie. You you are brought into Colin Farrell, uh, yeah. who is really excellent and who is mentioned in the in the, uh, the, the the movies that are winning awards these days, yes, exactly, uh, is a, is great in this movie, and he's he's got a wife whose name she's she's black. Jo yes, Kyra Jodie Turner Smith, another well known actress. I think she's British, yeah. A Jodie Turner Smith, yeah. And it's husband and wife, and it's sometime in the future. They yeah. don't say exactly when. Yeah. And you get to um, participate with them and the child. So it's a family with a number of people in it. And the husband and wife between Farrell and Jody Turner Smith are um, really interesting. They both play it so well. Excellent. They, they're, they're both um, family people. They understand each other. They have a wonderful, warm, loving relation. Even though they're a multiracial couple, uh, and they uh, they they are challenged with this problem about Yang, uh, and you don't see any high drama or overacting here. You're just in the room with them, and you begin to understand the dynamics between the husband and the wife, and and you love them both. Yeah. You love them both for the relationship that they are demonstrating to you. This relationship is so sweet and pure. Um, that, that you know, it's just sort of like the ideal husband and wife, beyond anything you've seen in the movies. 
Um, so I really liked that. I liked her. I liked her grace. She had grace. And so right. does Farrell. He has grace, too. And um, they do have a few little arguments, you know, which is which what happens in marriages, too, you know. So it's very realistic, you know, even though the relationship is really good. But the, I think her work and, you know, him and his, you know, she's trying to find out what he's doing to get Yang back to life. So, yeah, it's just it's just a facet, fascinating, fascinating thing. And then the one thing that was mentioned is even the neighbor, George, all his children are uh, cyborgs, you know? So, and then there was something about people can't have children anymore. There's some kind of a thing that uh, the couples are having difficulty having children, maybe because of nuclear war or whatever. They get into that very slightly, you know? But it's just all these little pieces start filling, fitting together. But I couldn't agree with you more that the relationship between the husband and the wife is just really pure and really nice. And the, the love they have for their daughter. Oh, yeah. One thing I forgot. The reason, the, the way that Yang conked out, they were all in this dance thing, I think, on a, on a, video, a Zoom, Zoom kind of video thing with these dancers, you know, leaders. And this, this, the husband, the wife, and the little girl are all dancing, and Yang is dancing. And then after the the, the 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 people on the you know the leaders on on the Zoom say okay enough Yang keeps keeps going and going so they know something's wrong and then after he keeps going then bingo he's at, he's out and they go through all the machinations of the different places to, and they find out that his the central computer is bad uh, uh, for Yang and there's problems there with the central computer so then Sarita Choudhury Cleo. She plays the muse, the museum um, director or whatever. They have a museum for techno sapiens. I think that's what it techno was. Techno sapiens, yeah. And yeah. he was, uh, and she was terrific. Um, yeah, she's uh, a good actress too. She Cleo, played Sarita, really yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. She was, she was also a very good actress. You know, no overacting, yeah. but right in the role, right in the in the collaborative, you know, cast. I I really enjoyed that about this movie. So let's talk about um, you know Yang for a minute. Yes, that's He's exactly played by Justin Min. Yeah, it was very good, very flat effect, and you know it's not easy to act so flat effect as he was acting. Um, exactly. and, and, and he's failing, and, and his his mind is going. He doesn't he doesn't have the same sharpness that he was built to have, or that he had before. Um, it's like um, you know Alzheimer's or something. It's, he's he's not doing that well, and he's forgetting things and not able to respond or, you know, uh, satisfy the family around him, and uh, they begin to wonder about him, and and uh, the the husband takes him to a an, a back alley fixer, right? Exactly, uh, Russ. Because Russ. it's against the law yeah. to uh, to do that. And this yeah. is an illegal bootleg fix. Exactly. <laughs> And I, I guess I don't remember exactly, but I guess if he had taken them, taken y uh, Yang to an, an ordinary robot hospital, uh, they would have retired Yang, and, and the family would never have seen him again. Exactly. Uh, so he took him to a fixer, and um, uh, Cleo, Cleo in the museum was uh, symp sympathetic to that, and she wanted to help him out. Um, so it's Farrell's mission to fix Yang. That's what it's about. So I I, I have to say that um, I I thought you know there was a, a suggestion that Yang was more than just a robot. You know that that always comes up uh, back to the time of Rodman's Robots, which was written as a short story that I read in school years ago by some Eastern European writer. It was a, actually a play. Rodman's Universal Robots, R-U-R. And there's always a question when you uh, address this subject of whether the robot has become human, whether the robot has developed sensibilities that make him more than a robot. And, and I suspected there were indications of that also in this movie. Do you agree? Definitely. And he played that role so well. I think he got into acting late. I, I read it, but I can't remember now. He, I think he was a, in, in some kind of a business thing, 
and eventually sort of fell into acting. He's he's a Korean actor, you know, and he played this. I mean, it's as you said, it's not easy to play a role of a of a robot, you know, especially one that's failing. But he really played it. I mean, the director of this movie really is also part of this because he directs the the um, the actors, and he did a good job too. You know, I think color. Well, what was his name? Did you, do I have that right? Kologanda or something? Co, co, yeah, Kogonada. Kogonada, yeah. That's an Asian name. I, I don't he know. He's Jap, Jap, Japanese. Japanese, okay. Yeah. And it, it was, you know, it's it, it really he turned this into an art. Now, this, as you said, this, this movie is so smooth and all these profound uh, thoughts or profound uh, symptoms, things are in there, you know, about Robots, as you said, feeling ro- the robot turned into more than a robot. Uh, he developed a little bit of emotions, and uh, so and then the whole family structure, and, and but they never were able to get him back. I think right at, at the end of the movie, he's still he's still conked out, right? And it's yeah. all flashbacks, right? Yeah, it's all flashbacks. And at it's the all end, flashbacks to gone. before he conked out, and I then after Yang, them. how are they gonna how are they gonna live after Yang? Because they've they've fallen in, into affection with him you know I mean, he was a member of the family just like and he was a robot but you know just like animals have become part of the family and the robot became part of the family he wasn't even looked at as a robot anymore he was looked at as a, as a, as a human you know even though his emotions are not as developed as a human but yeah but it's so it's just really profound i i like this movie for all the subtle clues and subtle messages as you as you mentioned right a lot of subtle messages here well the, the family was really special in a special time and they didn't help us that much in terms of understanding when that what that time took place or you know how it was different from today um but if you have a family and across the street you have a family with multiple robots um the, the family structure is different um and uh um, uh, at the same time, they're emulating real family, and I guess the the young girl, the young girl yeah, is Mika. Um, hmm? Mika, Mika is her name, and Mika. Malia Emma. She's Indonesian. Her name, her real the actress's name is Malia Emma Chandra Jaja, and she's hard to and, pronounce that. Yeah, and it uh, and, wasn't there another daughter too. There was another daughter. There the other daughter was not them. It was it was George's. The neighbors' daughters, and mm-hmm. the older daughter, and then younger daughters, two twins, and and the, and the older daughter. They're they're all uh, cyborgs. They're all uh, uh, techno sapiens. Mika, Mika is human, right? Yeah, uh, Mika, Mika is Mika human, is human. And that's the, the problem girl, yeah. here, because yeah. because Mika loves Yang. Yeah, Mika yeah. has grown up with Yang. It's, uh, sort of uh, his, he's been her, you know her. Her, her caretaker. Exactly. Her, yeah, and and uh, she has a real relationship. With, and I think the dynamic is something like this. <clears throat> so Mika is very unhappy that Yang is not functioning. Yes. She knows that he's not functioning. She knows he's a robot. She knows that something's wrong. And she puts it on the father, whose name is what? Jake. Yeah, Jake. Jake. That's Colin Farrell. Who's really perfect for this part. He's a great actor. And uh, you know, can you get can you get my Yang fixed? And he cares a lot about Mika. It's that family dynamic, and that's why he goes to so much trouble, breaks the law, you know, and is willing to pay any amount they want uh, to fix Yang, <clears throat> even though it's kind of clear that Yang is not really fixable. <laughs> Nobody can fix Yang. Sadly, because we, we don't really know that until later in the in the movie that it's it's not fixable, you know. That, yeah. that, uh, yeah. uh, really so, so here's I, Yang, part of the family, um, and he's um, a, a very kind robot. He's um, he's caring even. He, he cares about Mika. There's a thing going on, even though he's a robot, um, and he's he's the perfect member of the family. Perfect old, older brother for for Mika, uh, and and I think that uh, this is all about trying to retain the family integrity. 
Um, it's about trying to prevent the death, so to speak, of the older brother, who Mika cares a lot about. So uh, Jake is willing to go to those extremes and take take those uh, risks. Um, and I think one comment I read in one of the reviews is uh, in this movie, Jake discovers the life that has been passing before him as he reconnects with his wife and daughter. So what's happening? I mean, if you accept that, what's happening is Yang is is dying. Yang is not able to be part of their little family. Um, and 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 that um, Jake is unable to fix that. And in the process, it's pretty subtle, isn't it? That's why it's a good movie. In the process, he rediscovers the family without Yang. Hence the title, After Yang. What happens to these really well-defined characters, these dynamic characters, after Yang? When he dies, what, what do they come to? Where are they going without a robot who played a role? And, um, you know, that's probably the point of it all. Yeah. And then they show that Yang had two previous owners. And because the, the, the lady in the museum, what was her name, Cleo, she was able to take, take this, this central computer and break into it, right, to show who was Yang's previous owners. And they show key points that were picked up, right? They thought originally it might be a spy thing, right? But it was, it was, they were picking up key points, emotional points with Yang with the previous, when the previous, during the previous owners. And he sort of had this love relationship with this, with this woman. I don't remember if she was actually a, a, a techno sapien too, right? And they show that, and they show the two different, the two previous, uh, uh, lives of you know of so I mean the key thing here is that little girl Mika she was devastated you know by this machine that that malfunctioned so she's getting you, you know you, she's getting attached really closely attached to this to this techno sapien and then he dies so it would be just like if if an, a, an actual you older brother had died that's how she dealt with this. Very traumatic for them, you know. You and figure out what the what the racial thing was. So you have a husband, Jake, who's howling. Yeah. yeah. Now, and I, I, I think this takes place in. I mean, arguably, they didn't really say it in in the UK, so in Britain somewhere. Um, and the wife, um, who is British and who has a British, clearly a British accent, Jody Turner Smith, uh, playing what's it, Kira. Yeah, I think she was from Britain, but then as a little girl, they moved to the United States. The parents. Well, you're think. right. Well, she's a movie star. So. Yeah, but she's, she went to high school and everything. I think college. So um, they, um, she's black. Okay. Yeah. And then the, the girl, the daughter, the young daughter, Mika, is Asian. As you said, she's. Thai or whatever it was. The Chinese uh, Indonesian. I have I have a okay, so friend who's Chinese. She's a real person. She's a real yeah. human being. Yeah, yeah. So she can't be the product of Jake and Kira. She has got to be adopted, maybe adopted. Yeah, that's or that's something I think, or genetically modified. <laughs> I, I no, I, I think in the movie they start. They said she was adopted, and all these children. Uh, you know, they're, they're adopting children. So she was definitely adopted, you know. She was an adopted child. But um, something, again, about they said that people weren't couldn't have children or something. Well, that, that goes to, a, I think, a, a central point in the movie. Yeah. They're, they're trying to create an environment of the future. They're trying to tell you how things are going to be yeah. in the future. Um, and okay, let's take that as nobody seems to have their own natural, nobody seems to have their own natural children anymore for some reason, some, you know, environmental reason. Um, and then you have a different kind of family. It's not the same kind of family that you would have today because she's not their natural child. She's adopted. And 
and Yang um, was, I think they must have acquired Yang for her. Yes, they did. Yeah. They to be her tutor, as you said. So here's a family that's not like an ordinary family that has existed for the last 200,000 years in humanity. It's a different kind, different thing. And what you get is this kind of an Emil Zola ex human experiment. What happens to this unusual family in a world where you can't have your own children, in a world where you have to adopt or buy a robot? Uh, what happens when one of them dies? And it's traumatic, and they really have to work at it, and they have to find another family. It's like, you know, if your pet dies, you reorganize your family. It's gone, and it's out of your family, so your family morphs into another family, another kind of family. And I think that's what's happening here. Um, but I think what, it, what it's telling us is that um, Jake, and for that matter, Hira, really care about having a family. And they are going to work hard at retaining the three-party family, uh, even though the fourth party is gone. Um, and and it, so this is the nature of the family, say, in the 22nd century. Exactly. And, you know, and how they uh, adapt um, to the change in circumstances. It's the human experiment 100 years, 150 Precise. years later. You know? you know, the whole Obama thing with the uh, European Caucasian mother and the African father, you know, th th that's just projected 200 years in the future. And then they adopt a little, I mean, I have cousins who have adopted ch little girls from China, you know, and um, um, so, and, you know, so, and my former roommate was Korean adopted by an Alabama Christian white family. So, I mean, it happens, but this movie shows what's going to happen in the, in the future yeah, and how that's... different it is. And we want to talk about, um, you know, what, what the concept was for Yang. Yang was human-like. Yeah. Uh, Yang had a nicely programmed personality. Exactly. He was well-educated. He knew what he had to do um, to teach um, Mika. Um, and um, he was the perfect entry. So you start out with today where little girls have stuffed animals <laughs> to, you know, the, the small robots that are being made in Japan and, uh, you know, do all kinds of things. And that technology is moving quickly, the, the chips for it, you know, the dynamics for it. There's a lot of companies, Boston Scientific, right, are making robots for, for various purposes, including war. Um, but, you know, we are about to see and I think an explosion of robot technology on not only on the assembly line, okay, but at home, and not only to clean the dishes, but to you know clean the floor, not only to do labor in the home, but to actually teach our children. It's coming. Exactly. And it's not here yet, but it's coming. And give it another 30, 40, 50, or 100 years, and this will be here. So you get these two dynamics to two vectors one is can't have children uh, the families don't you know grow organically you have to sort of create artificial families and the second is that technology of the time coming soon plays a role in filling that gap that artificial technology it's and it's whether or not the robot loves you you can love the robot like, exactly. a, stuffed, like a stuffed animal much better. Very profound. Like, you know, these all, all these things you're mentioning is just amazing. And to try to wrap our minds around this, you know, in, in our present era, and then what's going to transpire over the next 120 years and how things will be so different, you know, as, as this technology progresses. I mean, he is just so, you know, he's so real, you know, Yang is so real, you know. And, and one of the things they... God, they, they bought a, an Asian-looking um, robot, Technosapien, because of Mika. They wanted her to feel her heritage, you know, that there was uh, some connection with her own heritage. So these are all very important points that you were talking about. They're subtle things. They're subtle things that 
yeah. uh, uh, that do, uh, as you can extend today's family culture, at least in, in this country, um, to what is happening. Uh, you know, the diverse, um, you know, cultural background, the diverse race, um, the, the, the wish to have the, the adopted robot uh, be at least look like the adopted child so that they would be more comfortable with each other. You know, all of these, all of these factors, all of these phenomena uh, exist today. It's just that they advanced it by 100 or 150 years. Um, now, you know, know, things may even be more advanced in, in, in 200 years than this movie projects, you know, because technology is changing so fast in my own life, you know, 70 something years. And, and from where it was in the early, late 40s, early 50s to today, it's like phenomenal, you know. I mean, the changes with computers, technology, cell phones, computers, blah, blah, blah. So it's just, it's changing so fast that this may not even be realistic in 120. It may be even more advanced in 100 or 200 years. Well, you know, so let's let's look at the production values on it. I I thought um, it was a very well made movie. Yeah. I thought the uh, the shots of the individuals to sort of to carefully observe their emotional states uh, was good. The acting I, I mentioned I thought was very good. Um, I wonder, though, I wonder if you had the same reaction. Sometimes it moves slowly. And, and of course, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Kogo Nada was probably wanted to do that. He intended to do that, to let you savor the emotional energy that was going back and forth between them. Um, but you could say that sometimes it moved too slowly. What do you think? If, if, the, if, it, if a certain scene answers your questions too soon, then what? Then it, it's it's sort of like it's not as effective as if if you if it gives a little time. You know, we're all human, and we need some time to let this all sink in. This this there's some really far fetched concepts here that we really never fa really thought about or faced before. So I think this is this is all planned, engineered by him to 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 keep it slow at certain point. So you look at all the nuances, the machinations of you know, Colin talking to, to the museum woman, what was her name, Cleo, you know, back and forth, and they're going to put the Yang into a museum, you know, stuff like that. So it's just fascinating, fascinating. Movie. There were some interesting quotes um, about the movie. I don't remember they were on the screen, um, you know, as quotes or whether they were spoken. But uh, the notion was that you could not understand this family until you understood the demise of one of its members. So. And that's really interesting. You couldn't, and then for, to go further, you couldn't understand humanity without understanding what is not human. It's sort of like, you know, um, uh, it's sort of the mix minus kind of thing you take away an essential element in order to understand what's left and that that would that happened that meant was mentioned a couple of times in the movie one way or another uh, that you 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 needed to appreciate that things were taken away from you before you understood the essence of what was left and I, I thought there was a lot of thought that went into that so George um you know, what did you think in general of this movie? We have re reviewed so many movies, really, over the past couple of years. Uh, and this was different, wasn't it? This is a different movie. This definitely a, different. Science fiction, um, very mm, thoughtful movie, um, a careful movie. A mo you knew immediately that they were trying, that, what's his name, Olaganda, whatever, uh, was trying to uh, teach you something about humanity. Um, it's different. There's no violence at all in it. There's only thoughtful people, some of whom are more law-abiding than others. There's members of family trying to play out their family instincts or not. Um, it's a different society. Um, so what did you think of it in, in terms of comparing it to 
all the other movies we have seen, it's different. It's not anything like what we've seen before. It's just very different. It's the whole science science fiction thing in the future, um, uh, the feelings, the emotions between the, the humans, uh, humanoids and the uh, techno, techno sapien, um, the little girl and the interaction between her and this uh, yang. This is like nothing we've ever seen before, but as I've said, very, very profound. A lot of different yeah. new ways to look at things, new emotions that you feel while you're watching this movie. Um, just phenomenal. Um, I really like this movie because it's yeah. so different. And because it's of hard the- to rate a movie that's different from all the other movies we've seen. Yeah. <laughs> How do you rate it? I just think 10 plus. This is, I mean, not only the, the, the acting, but the directing, the scenes, everything. You know, a lot of, a lot of, it looked like it was in Japan. The architecture was like a Japanese house. So, um, which I really enjoy. I, lo- I love the Japanese architecture. That's my favorite architecture, um, along with Frank Lloyd Wright. So, I mean, it's, it's just, there's a lot of, um, I give it a 10 plus, Jay. I'll leave it at that. I go on and on, but. It's a ten plus. It's got it's got all the features um, that make it a ten plus. Even though, mm. even comparing to all the other ones we've seen, it's really excellent. How do you feel? I I love I love the the characters, um, yeah. including Yang. Um, I love them all, uh, and especially the wife. She was just a fantastic. I. I I really couldn't take my eyes off the way she was engaging with Jake. She's uh, really but, elegant. Yeah. Yeah, elegant. It's really a fantastic human being. Um, I, I I guess I would be a little concerned about the speed at which the movie, you know, um, made its way down the path. Um, but if you ask me, you know, what what I didn't like about the movie, it was nothing I didn't like. If you ask me uh, what the flaws in the movie would be, I can't think of anything. It was poetic. It was a poetic statement. You know, he put us in his other world and then poetically described it. So um, I don't know if I give it a 10 plus, but I give it a 10, George. I'll leave you to be the one with the 10 plus. Yeah, I'll give it to because it's just, there's, a, there's emotion. You know, there's, in my own life, I'm very familiar with a lot of these things. Because my cousin, you know, adopted the two children from China. My former roommate was this Korean adoptee in, to a white family and out in Huntsville, Alabama. So there's a lot of things there. You know, my friend uh, Diane from Indonesia, Chinese Indian, she's very close. I was very close with her. So she reminds me of this Mika, you know, the Mika reminds me of her. So there's a lot of things here that are very close to my heart. So I'll give it to 10 plus because there's an emotional, I have, I feel an emotional tie in this movie other than just an intellectual tie. So I'll leave it at that. I'd like to add one, one other thought here. Sure. So we really don't know too much about what happened between now, the current, the present, and that um, that other world that we we saw into. And of course, um, you know, bad things could have happened. Um, the world could have suffered a lot. And and this movie depicts the surviving culture, the surviving family. And you you wonder, you you don't know. Uh, how much damage might have taken place. And the one thing that struck me, which I would mention here at the end of our discussion, is that um, these guys were the survivors of whatever happened in in the interim, and it might have been very unpleasant. And, and um, what my thought was, gee whiz, you know, everything seems so, I don't want to say utopian, but leave it to Beaver kind of a family that works as well as this family did. And I say to myself, uh, now, are we, are we missing something here? Um, what happened between now and then? Because it's hard to draw, here's the point, it's hard to draw a straight line from our lives here in this country, in this world, from where we are in 2022, with all the Michigas going on everywhere, to where these characters were in the next century. It's hard to draw a straight line. 
Um, and you can't, you can't, because you know that, you know, the way we are now, the direction, including, you know, all the issues, including climate change and all that, um, you know, are leading to a bad place. Yes. So what you have to wrap your mind around to appreciate this, this uh, new world um, is that it's a surviving world. Is whatever happened to our world with all those negative things happening around us, it somehow survived. And this is the story of the survivors. They may not, you know, they may know more than the people who didn't survive. Remember the movie we saw? I forgot the name of it. With the, was it Denzel Washington? Uh, you know, after the, uh, the the nuclear holocaust. What what was that? Uh, what was the name of that? It was like remember it was it was. The book. Dense, the what? The book. Yes, that one. There's sort of similarities here because they do allude here that this is the world after there was a, some kind of a cataclysmic situation. So maybe, you know, that's, you know, that they, there's still life survives after the cataclysm. And just like the, the way the book ended, you know, um, at that castle in San, in San Francisco Bay, you know, that uh, Alcatraz, I think it was. That, that there's some, you know, but do you have to get to that point where we are now, Jay? In our, in America and in the world, it's like you, what a mess, you know. We're really in in a, it's a mess. I mean, Russia, Ukraine, everywhere. You look all the way around the world, even here in Washington, you know. Whoever thought January 6th, there would be that kind of thing that went on. So we're in deep trouble. And we don't, you know, nuclear war. I mean, Putin's nuts, you know. Where are we headed, you know? So I worry about the, the world in the next two or three years, where we're going to be. So so this might be after after the cataclysm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and this gives me one other thought before we go. And that is the title of the movie is After Yang. So we have to be focused on that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there have been certain reviews and comments to the effect that, well, the, the, he tried hard to make the family survive um, and come together, even in the absence of Yang. But, you know, we don't know that for sure. And an equal possibility is that he tried and failed. And the family after Yang is not a good place. We don't know. We are left wondering. George, thank you so much. Thank George you, George. George movie reviewer par excellence. We'll see you next time. You are too, movie reviewer par excellence. See you in two weeks, Jim. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.